Hello, I'm David. I'm Bryson. And I'm Jonathan. Today we're going to talk about building a DevOps development CI CD pipeline. I know from all you guys, you guys built a CI CD pipeline, but is it a mature pipeline? We're going to talk about all the essential stages to make your DevOps CI CD pipeline mature. All this will be automatic. It's going to be all running from a trigger base all the way to the end. All right, I'm going to turn over to Bryson. So the first step will be to check in the code. Uh, this will then trigger a build, which will automatically go through all the steps required to get the code from raw source code into a package that can be delivered to production. Along the way, there are several steps where the code is tested, and Jonathan will tell you more about that. All right, so in the static code analysis stage of the pipeline, you will be running a static code analysis tool to scan your project, and it will in the scan, it will ensure that code quality and cybersecurity standards are being upheld within the project. Um, in this way, it will relieve employees from having to schedule code review, peer review meetings, and manually pour through the code to verify these things that can be automatically verified via the static code analysis tool. So it allows you, it relieves these resources and allows them to spend their time in places where they're more needed. Um, the next stage would be the unit test stage. And uh, after that would be the unit integration test stage and to differentiate between these two. Yeah, so I, I, know, I know we use the term unit integration test, but a lot of other companies just call it integration test. And the reason we use unit integration test is because, you know, from our experience, there's a other type of integration test such as system integrations, right? Or third party integration. So we wanna make sure that we distinguish that this is unit integration, which is integrating multiple unit of code together and test those. So these two testing stages, the reason why they're important is they're fast, lightweight, and they quickly provide you with the pass fail results of the project. Um, and the, those test results can then be fed into other parts of the pipeline and whether or not it proceeds or fails at that point. Um, the next stage after that is a code coverage stage, and this will also use a code coverage tool to pour through the project, and it goes through the test files as well as the application files, and it sees how much of the code in the application files are being covered by the tests within the test files. And this will just give you a metric like 60, 70% tells you how much of the application code is covered by those tests. Um, and important to note that while this does tell you how much of the application code is being covered by the test, it doesn't necessarily um, ensure that the, there's quality in the tests that are being written. The quality of the test is something that still needs to be ensured separately, but it is a powerful tool to provide you with that quick metric. Once you're satisfied with your code coverage and your testing results, uh, you can then build the package and store it in a retrievable location. Uh, you want to make sure that your build process is versioning your packages so that you can later go back and capture those uh, to roll out again later if there's something broken with the automatically deployed to development package. With our platform, we would be doing automatic testing of that, automated testing, uh, so that you don't have to tie up any more resources doing testing in the development environment. Uh, we would then later automate a deployment to your QA or user acceptance uh, environment. And from then on, we still have the notification stage, which at this stage, you can integrate most of the pipeline tools that you'll be using with something, for example, like Slack. Um, right now we have Slack integrated with Jenkins, so it will send uh, build notifications. The last stage on in our pipeline is dashboard. Now, this is one of the stages that are overlooked by many, many company. And the reason for that is typically people associate the pipeline with being more of a technical um, activity. However, it is critical that you provide visibility and transparency into how the pipeline is doing so that, you know, whoever can go out there, it could be your PO, it could be your stakeholder, it could be, you know, your manager, it could be whoever can go out and click on a link and show, here's the trend, right? Here are the last three failure, right? Now, if you like this video, stay tuned. <laughs> we are gonna 
build a lot more video. We're going to record a lot more video. We're going to go in depth into each of those stages, show you what is a good unit test versus a bad unit test. We're going to talk a lot more about all the stages, how you're going to do this, uh, post deployment testing, you know, how we automate some of that stuff, get it to run automatically so that, you know, you don't have the idea behind this is called a no touch pipeline, right? It goes from the very beginning to the very end without any, and it will provide you with the information you need. Thank you so much for, for viewing this.